Let's start with the writing of this because I thought that it was uh, so expertly uh, penned. But my, I'm curious, there's moments in the film where it, it gets really dark and it feels like you're spiraling down, but then you'll introduce this very quirky character yeah. with this hilarious line. Did you do that as a writer just to keep your sanity while writing it? Did you find yourself spiraling down and feel like that was there, or did you want it to be comedic from the start? I knew I, I was intended it to be a black comedy, but it got, let's say, a lot darker <laughs> as it went along. And then when actually when the actors come in, came in, because they're bringing their own sort of depth to perform the role, it, then it got even more somber. But yeah, originally, I mean, you're sitting alone in a room for three or four hours a day. It's quite a boring activity, I find. So I'm kind, I'm trying to amuse myself as amuse, you know, a projected audience that I have in my mind. I just find sometimes, you know, if you write a really dark scene, you, you think, okay, <clears throat> that's really dark, let's try to lighten it up a bit in the next one, you know, have some, comedy but I think my you know my kind of philosophical aesthetic attitude is I always have both the light and the dark going on at the same time and you know it's going to come out in the right and Cat is always going to say something really acerbic or sarcastic and somber you know those are the kind of characters I create so it's always I feel like it's always going to tonally switch back and forth all the time. Right now you have a, a habit of directing the stuff that you write it seems to be a, a uh, thing that you do now so does that come into play when you're writing do you are you thinking about the directing process by that point and thinking well if this actor was to bring in and do you have in your mind who you want to put in these roles by then or you just want to sit down and write it and then move to directing on Calvary I had Brendan uh, in my mind from the very beginning and so he got a very early draft of the script didn't have any other actors because I always feel like if you write with an actor in mind and then they pass on it it's quite a depressing experience you know <laughs> You're having to reconceive everything. Um, but, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I just, I think my experience on The Guard was that it went on, the editing process went on for quite a long time. And I'd never been to film school. So that whole post-production period was almost like me learning the ropes, as it were. And that had a direct influence on the writing of Calvary because I realised I was writing too many scenes I didn't need. I was beginning the scene too early and finishing it too late. And I found all that out in the edit in the guard. So when I came to write Calvary, it was a very, very tight script, you know. And um, it turned out that way. There was hardly, I think maybe only two scenes were cut from the finished movie. So I had a tough time on the guard, but it did lead to, I think, making my writing better or just more precise, let's put it that way. And if your writing's more precise, it makes the shooting and the editing of the next film even more precise. And it definitely, I definitely believe movies shouldn't be longer than 100 minutes. So, you know, <laughs> that's, Amen. <laughs> that's my thing as well. So I'm always thinking about that, which le leads you to try to, to think, you know, do we actually need this scene? Let's jettison if we don't need it. Right, and, and that works because it has a nice pace to it. it. It doesn't feel too long, and you're right, there's a lot of times where there's not a, a lot of unnecessary things going on with the characters. You're yeah. in, in the scene and you're moving with it. Which, which helped a lot. Um, there's a lot in this about, there seems to be a lot of animosity between this small town and this, and this Catholic priest. They like him, he's a good priest, they say that often, but it's like they're all in the background waiting for him to fail or to fall or something bad to happen so they can rejoice in that. What was the mindset of, of the theme of, of getting into that and, and, well, and fleshing guess, that out? Well, I guess, you know, in Ireland and around the world, people are very upset about what, what's happened politically, financially, and with all the religious scandals. So there is a kind of lot of anger going around, and so I wanted to express that kind of anger. Brendan Geeson said an interesting thing. He, he feels that all the characters are trying to dis destroy the priest, but they actually don't want him to be destroyed because he is the kind of, he's the paragon of virtue really in their mind. So ho however confrontational they're being, they're hoping against hope that he will come through it, really. And I think that's an interesting take on the whole thing. Yeah, it is, because it's almost like what he represents, they want to fail, but not him personally yes, as, exactly. as a person. So. Because in a way, he represents the best of themselves if they could become better people, I guess. Right, right. So if, if he fails, then they fail as well. I think a lot of the anger in the, the, of the sporting characters, a lot of it comes out of loneliness as well, you know. 
at least if you're getting an angry response from somebody, at least that person is responding to you, so you feel less alone in a strange way. Right. So I think that's another element to it. Right. The ending of this movie, as a, as a viewer, you're, you're wanting it to go a certain way. Uh, you're wanting certain things to happen. Um, is this what we see on, on the film? Was that the original ending, or do you ever go back and rethink how it ends, or, or is this you had in your mind this is the way it's going to play out, and it's stuck to that? The, the conclusion of the priest's story, what happens to him, was always there. I always knew that would be the ending. Um, the, the, the kind of the murder mystery element, who is, who is the guy who's threatening him? Uh, who, is, who is the chief suspect? I only really decided on that two-thirds of the way through the script. So, which means I'm kind of creating characters who are both, who are kind of, on face value, m may just be kind of slightly eccentric people, or they may be sinister as well. And because I hadn't decided, they all had to be that way, you know, mm -hmm. like in an Agatha Christie sort of whodunit. There's always something slightly sinister about each character, you know. Um, so that, that was there. But the ending was always there. Mm -hmm. I always knew how it was going to go. I always have the the first 20 minutes and the last 20 minutes of a script in my mind before I sit down to write. Interesting. Yeah. Talk a little bit about choosing that location and also did you shoot it with a, because not only just the location but there was there was a gray tone to it which kind of helped to the to the dark theme of the movie. The location is called East Key in County Sligo and there's lots of references in the film to it being a surfing destination which is true. When I, see it was where my mother was from, when I was going there on summer holidays because I was brought up in London but we used to go back to where mum was from. Um, it wasn't, you know, it was all, you know, the waves would be crashing in all the time, but nobody actually thought this is actually great surfing breaks or whatever, it, it's become that later on. Um, the, the, the kind of tone of the palette of the movie is influenced by Andrew Wyeth, a, a kind of New England painter. Hmm. So those kinds of, a lot of the ex, ex, exterior shots, there's, lots, there's a very somber palette to it. Um, but then when we get inside, there's lots of kind of, in the bar, it's kind of painted a hellish red <laughs> right. to be a kind of hell on earth, and it's very claustrophobic. So it was having that kind of visual dynamic, you know, going on. At Wife has a lot of frames where there are kind of doors within doors, windows looking out onto spaces. So I tried to kind of use that as a kind of visual motif as well. Yeah, it was great. And as far as a who's going to do it film, it, it was, it was was it was expertly written because it's you almost lose and forget that that's yes, what you're expecting you get so enwrapped in the characters that you forget oh yeah this is what's this going is on all, in the background. This is gonna, it comes back in at certain heightened moments during the, as a narrative and then of course in the last 15 minutes and it's really coming home to hit you basically. Right right well great job uh, writing you. and directing and I appreciate you sharing it with us. Thanks a lot. Yeah.